On Christmas Eve 1891, in the Melbourne suburb of Windsor, a vicious murder occurred that still echoed to this day. Was this the work of the man history calls Jack? A woman looking to occupy the empty house down Andrews Street, Windsor, was put off by the foul smell that consumed the property. During further inspection, the smell seemed to be originating from under the hearthstone in the fireplace. Suspicious, police were informed, after lifting up the hearthstone. They were confronted with a very rough concrete job. Using a pickaxe to break through, they quickly found a human leg protruding from the broken cement. The leg was attached to the naked body of a young woman. The body was badly decomposed. A murder had been committed. It was found she had received several blows to the head from a battle axe. While the poor woman was probably unconscious, her throat was sliced open with a knife. Eventually, the woman was identified as 26-year-old Emily Lydia Mather. Her husband was Albert Williams, and he was also her killer. Albert had secrets. His real name was Frederick Bailey Deeming. And Fred, well he wasn't just a murderer, he was a serial killer. Deeming the demon was on the prowl for a wife, which would have been fine, but he was already married with four children. He began to woo a villager named Emily Mather. Unfortunately for bad old Fred, his family made an unwanted cameo. Fred made out that his wife was in fact his sister, but he knew this plan wouldn't hold. So he came up with a sinister scheme. He rented a house for his family on the edge of a town called Denham Villa. He also bought five barrels of cement. Free from his family, he married Emily. The newlyweds moved to Australia and rented a villa in Windsor. A few days later, a couple of boxes of cement were delivered. After he killed his second wife, Freddie travelled by boat to Sydney, under the alias Baron Swanson. During the voyage, Fred was on his very best behaviour, where he met Kate Ronesfell. Struck by the young 19-year-old's beauty, he began to woo her. He wooed her all the way from Sydney to her sister's place in Bathurst, where she finally accepted his marriage proposal. Engaged, Fred left for Western Australia, where he got a job in the mining settlement of Southern Cross. After acquiring a house, he sent for Kate. Luckily, when Kate arrived in Melbourne on her way to Southern Cross, at the Federal Coffee Palace, she received a telegram from her sister that read, For God's sake, go no further. The Windsor horror had been uncovered. The paper confirmed for Kate that her fiancé, Baron Swanson, had been arrested for murder at Southern Cross. On a happy note, Kate went on to live a long life. She died in Canada in 1955 at the age of 82. Once Baron Swanson was discovered to be at Albert Williams, it wasn't long before his true identity would be known. Frederick Bailey Deeming, family man. The search for the Deeming family was a macabre success. Under the kitchen of Denham Villa, entombed in cement. The bodies had been placed almost ritualistically. Mary Deeming was face up. Nine-year-old Bertha 
and seven-year-old May were face down on opposite sides of their mother. Five-year-old Sydney and 18-month-old Leela at the foot of the group. Except for the oldest daughter, Bertha, who had been strangled to death. They all had their throats cut. The children were all in night clothes. The mother was fully dressed and also had a rope tied around her. At trial, Deeming claimed insanity, saying that he contracted syphilis while in London and that the spirit of his dead mother urged him to kill. Much like the Friday the 13th films a century later. Deeming was found guilty and sentenced to death. At 10.01am on the 23rd of May 1892 at the Melbourne Jail. Deeming was hung and later died. A dreadful tale. But what does this have to do with history's most famous figure? At the time, the Ripper applied his vile trade in Whitechapel, 1888. It's believed Deeming was in London. Deeming went by many names. Harry Lawson, Baron Swanson, Albert Williams. Was Jack the Ripper one? During that autumn of terror, a fiend lurked in the shadows, just beyond recognition, between August 31st to November 9th. Five would die. Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Kelly would forever be known as the canonical five and the victims of history's most infamous monster, Jack the Ripper. Has he finally been unmasked? as Frederick Bailey deeming. Let's look at the similarities of the two. Both were serial killers. Both victim selections were white females. Both killed their victims by slitting their throats, with the exception of deeming strangling his oldest daughter. Deeming fits the physical description of the Ripper, and one of the biggest Ripper theories is he contracted syphilis and went on a killing spree to destroy women. Deeming said at trial that he contracted syphilis in London. He used this in his insanity defence. Further, at the time, the Ripper was operating, according to one woman. Deeming was in the Whitechapel area. He talked to her about Catherine Eddowes, the fourth Ripper victim, before and after her murder. It has also been claimed Deeming would correspond with Catherine Eddowes during his travels. Supposedly, Scotland Yard considered Deeming a reasonable Ripper suspect, but they thought he was in jail at the time. He was not. While in Melbourne jail, he was asked if he was Jack the Ripper. Deeming didn't confirm or deny. Deeming wrote a biography while in jail, waiting to die. It was mysteriously destroyed after his death. Now let's look why Deeming and the Ripper may be two different entities. It's believed the Ripper killed strangers. Deeming killed people he knew. The Ripper savagely mutilated his victims and left them out on the street to be found. Deeming didn't mutilate his victims and went to extremes to hide the bodies under their homes in the hope they would never be found. It's hard to believe if the Ripper was Deeming how he could stop killing for three years after the bloodthirsty lust massacre of Mary Kelly. They are two different men, two different serial killers. However, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, here you go. Deeming was called Mad Fred as a child. He was a mama's boy. His father committed suicide by slashing his throat. After contracting syphilis in London, his mind may have broke, and went on a rampage against women, adopting the method his father used. After he recovered, he tried to move on, but his wife found out and blackmailed him. So Fred did away with his family, with no one suspicious at all. He thought that he'd committed the perfect murder, bloodlust awoken once again. He continued to kill until he was caught. The name Jack the Ripper has become synonymous with murder. So everyone who has ever viciously murdered an innocent victim is Jack the Ripper. 
Was Frederick Bailey deeming the Ripper? What do you think? Comment below.